If everything's looking a little bit blurry, maybe you're drinking too much. Or maybe it's because we're here to talk about the new Blurs module, which appeared in Darktable 3.8 at Christmas of 2021. It's probably the latter. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 107 of Understanding Darktable. Just a couple of quick things before we get into this. Uh, One, yes, slightly new camera position. It means that I don't have to turn my head as much to turn and you know, to look at you or to look at the screen. The slightly different white balance, which I feel is a better representation than what I had before. I spent a couple of hours on this yesterday. And hang around to the end because I do want to talk about the diffuse or sharpen module. But that's not the subject of this video. We are here to talk about the blurs module. Now, the blurs module was new in Darktable 3.8. And as it says on the outside of the box, It applies blur, as you would expect. So I dug out a couple of old images from my database, and I also created this image in GIMP uh, just as a test subject, basically, to demonstrate what the blurs module is designed to do. Now, I've added the blurs module to my corrections group over here. So we can turn the blurs module on. We start with the blur's radius, but before that, I want to look at the three blur types. You'll notice that we've got lens blur, motion blur, and Gaussian blur. So let's look at Gaussian, because that's the simplest, and we're probably all familiar with what a Gaussian blur does. And with the slider, you can simply increase the blur all the way out to 128 pixels. Now, unlike other modules in Darktable, you cannot right-click to wag the dog and enter a value greater than 128 in order to get a higher value. It is actually fixed at 128 pixels. If for some reason you need more than 128 pixels of blur, what I would suggest is just add a second instance. But I think most of the time 128 pixels will probably be enough. Of course, I say that in 2022 when I'm shooting with a 24 megapixel camera. A couple of years from now, we'll all be shooting with 200 megapixel cameras and maybe 128 pixels of blur won't be enough. It'll barely make a smudge. Who's to say? Anyway, that's Gaussian blur. Let's have a look at the lens blur. Now, the lens blur is designed to mimic the bokeh effect that you get from the aperture blades of a lens, right? And most older lenses... I'm paraphrasing from the Darktable 3.8 manual here, had five or seven blades. Most newer lenses have nine or 11. Anything greater than 11, you tend to pretty much mimic a circle. So you can dial in the number of aperture blades that you want to mimic with your blur. Again, the blur radius will allow you to set the intensity of that blur. Below that, we've got a concavity slider. And what this does is allow us to introduce a type of asterisk or star shape. And it will do that right up to the point at which the concavity value is equal to the number of diaphragm blades minus one. So in other words, I've got six diaphragm blades. So when the concavity value gets to five, something strange happens. That's where it reverses into a sort of burst effect. And you can drive this all the way out to a value of 9. Again, can we enter higher values? No, we cannot. Next, you've got the linearity slider. At a value of 1, all of the outside edges of the blur will be straight lines. Set it at 0, and regardless of any other values, you will have a perfect circle. Anything in between 0 and 1, and as you can see, you are slowly morphing between a circle and hard-edged blur. And then you've got the rotation control, which, as the name suggests, allows you to rotate where the aperture blades are relative to perpendicular or horizontal. All right, so that is the lens blur. Let's look at motion blur. I will reset the module. 
Motion blur starts with a graph across the middle here, which is essentially just showing you the direction of the motion blur. So it defaults to horizontal. If we introduce some motion blur, we can see that there is indeed motion blur constrained to horizontal. You've then got a direction slider. You can left click and drag on this to introduce any particular direction you want, or you can wag the dog and enter a positive or a negative value. So if you want minus 25 degrees, boom, there it is. Next up, we've got a curvature value, which will, as the name suggests, introduce a curve to the blur. And finally, we've got the offset value, which will allow you to almost rotate the curvature. But it is, there's more to it than that. It's a bit of a combination of, well, it's curving it as well as changing the intensity of the curve. So yeah, that is the motion blur. Okay, so those are the three types of blur that this particular module can introduce. How could we use that? Well, I dug out a couple of images. Uh, this was a nice peaceful morning on the Parramatta River, and I was looking for images that I could use the blurs module on, and I wasn't really sure what to look for. But I thought about water, and I thought, this is a nice peaceful river. We can see that the water was fairly still. But what if we wanted it to be that really nice, glossy, you know, long shutter kind of look? Well, we could do that. Let's introduce a drawn mask. And I'll just use the path tool. And I'm going to go around here. I'm going to avoid the actual uh, shapes and reflections that are on the water. And we'll go through to about there. And I could use Gaussian or I could use lens blur. I don't think it would really matter. I'm just going to bring that down a bit. So if we just take that up to about, I don't know, 70 pixels, something like that. That looks pretty good. Turn it off. We get some of the detail back on the water. Turn it back on. Nice. Just does a nice job of smoothing out that water. That's one potential use. Uh, I'm sure there are a gazillion other things you could do with the blurs module. Now, I did also grab this image of the ferry on the beach at Southwest Rocks, which I've used in a previous video. And I was thinking, what if I wanted those footprints in the sand to be just a little less obtrusive? You know, maybe they detract from the subject matter of the, the whole image just a little bit. Well, again, I would go with a drawn mask, grab the path tool, maybe just quickly rip around the image here, go control click, control click, control click, right click, close it off. Okay, let's turn the path off so we're not looking at it. Lens or Gaussian? Mm, we'll go with lens and we'll just increase the number of blades and we'll just increase the blur. I don't want to go too far because it could get a little bit fake very quickly. Yeah, look at that, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't know if that's actually a, a really good use case. It was just something that I thought of. If I was really concerned about all these footprints, I'd go in and use the retouch tool and actually just completely remove them. Because there's plenty of flat sand that I could clone and heal with. So, that, my friends, is the Blurs module introduced in Darktable 3.8. So if you're still running on 3.6 and you can't find it, that's why. Time to update. Now, I did say at the outset that I wanted to briefly discuss the Diffuse or Sharpen module. What I wanted to say about that was about a month ago, and I feel bad about that, apologies, Aurelian. Aurelian gave me an hour of his time on Skype, and we sat down and really dived into what the Diffuse or Sharpen module was designed to do and how it actually works and what the sliders in that module represent. And I recorded the Skype call and I've watched it once and I had planned to watch it again and I made a bunch of notes as per normal and I was going to do a video on the Diffuse or Sharpen module. 
But then about, oh, I don't know, a week ago, I guess, Todd Pryor posted on the Darktable unofficial group on Facebook a link to a bug, I think it was a bug report on GitHub by a member called Flannelhead, I think it was. Uh, and he basically said that he'd watched Boris's video on the Diffusal Sharpen module and was confused that the results didn't align with what he was expecting. And whoever Flannelhead is, he obviously understands the maths of what's going on in the code. He went and looked at the code and found what he believed to be some errors in the code. He then threw it out to Aurelian to say, can you check my work and see if you agree? Have I found bugs in the code? Aurelian came back and said, yep, there are bugs in the code. And it's really bad that this got through two peer reviewed um, <laughs> sets of you know, eyes over the, the uh, documentation. And so Aurelian has now incorporated replacement code for that particular module into the master branch. So if you are rolling your own and running 3.9, you will have the corrected code for the Diffuse or Sharpen module. For everybody who's waiting on an official release, I don't know if there's going to be another dot release or if they will just sit on it until the next major release, which should be mid-year. So yeah, be aware of that. And for that reason, I'm probably not going to do a video on the Diffuse or Sharpen module right now. It seems a bit pointless to expend the time and energy to try and explain something which I'm still struggling to wrap my head around, even after spending an hour online with Aurelian, when I know that the code that's in there is a little bit buggy. I'm just going to sit on it until uh, that revised code makes its way into an official release. So for anyone who was wondering why I hadn't got around to covering that particular module, that's why. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, questions, comments, feedback, sing out in the comments down below. Uh, I will do my best to answer any questions if there are any. And uh, hopefully this has given you some, some ideas on how to use the Blurs module in your images. All right, take care. I'll talk to you in the next one.